Hey there, it's Kristen, and I just wanted to introduce my very first Poppet printable. Um, so it is in my Kofi shop where you can find it, print it out, and you can make your own Poppet. So I just wanted to show you what you'll get. You'll get this sheet. This is essentially the whole Poppet. Um, you can print it on whatever kind of paper, cardstock you like. I would recommend at least uh, something that's a cardstock weight. But you'll see that you'll get the head, neck, arms, hands. The body is really the clothing, so it's the top, pants, and then it comes with two pairs of shoes. So you can mix and match the shoes or, you know, make multiple outfits. Um, so here are just a couple of ideas. I've made a couple already just ideas for assembling and printing but just make this your own whatever you know you all are brilliant i know you're going to come up with some great ideas that i haven't even thought of so i want to show you two that i've made and they look similar i would say uh, they were in different clothing but i use different kind of methods for each one so first of all, with, with this one, um, I printed the poppet onto mixed media paper. And then I used some watercolors. I use brush pens and I just add water. <laughs> I still call them watercolors. Uh, so I just uh, painted everything here, including you know the head, the head, the face, the arms, everything. And I use the mixed media paper because I find that the um, there's a better quality in terms of the the watercolors. Um, since I have a desk jet, I'm always afraid that the black ink is going to run. And with the mixed media paper, it doesn't seem to have quite as much of a problem with that. So that, you know, just something to think about. I did like how it came out a little bit better on the mixed media paper. You may also have noticed that I laminate. So um, I did uh, first paint it, and then I ran the entire sheet through my heat laminator, and that's why it's it's all shiny. So you can see that with both of these. I find that the lamination is very durable, and also with the having a dust jet, if the if they get wet at all you know all the colors are going to run and stuff so it really does a great job of protecting them and they just feel a lot more durable with this one instead of printing on that mixed media paper and kind of painting everything i printed it on some uh, recycled tan paper so you could print it on a colored card stock and this is um uh, trying to see what this is. This is six, 67 pound. Um, so it's just a nice weight card stock. And then I really collaged the, the rest of the clothing. I just added like a sticker and cut out some, some other um, designer papers. So if you're doing this, I think you could do it two, one of two ways. Um, you could just stick everything, glue, use a glue stick, or if you're using stickers, you could stick things right here. But remember, you're gonna be covering up the little dots. The dots are how you connect everything together. So one option could be like to poke holes first and then um, you know, cover it with your collage. Or you could technically put your collage on this side and then just cut it out from this side, poke the holes and everything. So for for this, um, like the clothing, the top and the and the pants, you would just use it on this side. It really wouldn't matter which side you kind of collaged over, just as long as you could see where the. Um, I don't know if you can see that through, but just as long as you could see, you know, and make sure that you are cutting the right areas. So that's just another idea. You can also, of course, just get like markers or something like that, crayons, whatever you want, and just color. Just color in here, color in the, the shoes or whatever it is that you'd like. You know, you can add uh, 
you know, whatever you'd like to the face, um, rosy cheeks or something like that. So these are just some ideas for you to personalize it. I wanted to show you another poppet. <laughs> She's just going to slide in here. This is a poppet that I wasn't really thinking about making. I made it um, for a Pulpin Paint. Pulpin Paint is a um, it's a 10-month immersion course. I'm a teacher in it, and it's hosted by Kyla Givehand. And each quarter, we focus on a different um, element. So we started with fire. So I just wanted to make a fire poppet to kind of commemorate that element. And so this is the fire poppet. I will also be putting this into my coffee shop as a printable. And so I just wanted to show you show you a couple of little details. So for example, the fingernails are polished and they're polished on this one too. And then I also added, you can see little earrings and these are just jump rings. It's just a larger jump ring. So when I'm making these, speaking of jump rings, that is what I'm using to connect everything here. I use brads here to connect the, the head, the neck, and then I typically use brads down here, whoops, sorry, to connect the feet or the shoes, and then pretty much everything else I'm using jump rings. And these are the same jump rings that you would use if you're making jewelry. And the reason for it is because it makes the poppet really movable. You know, they can do all kinds of things. And I really like all of the movement that you get when you add the jump rings. But if you want to just use the brads, you can use brads too. Okay. If you don't have jump rings and you're good with needle and thread, you could also just add thread here for these different connectors. Just uh, tie a little bit of string around, around these areas and you would still get a lot of that same movement. So I hope that just gives you some ideas for printing and making your poppet, um, giving your poppet some personality and really just giving it its own you know, identity. So now I want to just say really quickly, you're probably thinking, why would I have a poppet? <laughs> I don't play with dolls anymore. Well, I do. And I think you should play with dolls too. For me, everything is an oracle. So the doll is an oracle. So if you do divination, you read tarot, you read oracle cards, why not read the doll as well? So first of all, just the act of creating it you know, in whatever way that you want. There's a lot of freedom in that. Like I've made it purposely blank so that you can fill in and you can um, make it however you want. Um, you, you can name it. You can give it its own identity. You can change its clothes. You can, you know, add little things or not have anything at all. You know, make it really plain. It's completely up to you. But I think that that process is really a powerful process of self-discovery. Whatever you make is some aspect of you. So this version is some aspect of me. This version, which to me seems completely different, is another aspect of myself. So what is that? You know, when you when you make it and you put it together, what do you see? What is this doll telling you about you? that's just one thing. I think that's a really powerful thing in and of itself. But then I actually like to play with it, <laughs> not just sit it on the shelf. I do love that you can sit these on a shelf, for example, that their legs are going to dangle, which gives me so much joy. But I like to just kind of lay them down somewhere and see, sometimes when you lay them down, like <laughs> her hand is, see, like her hand is getting away from me. Um, you just lay it down, it does something. It like moves a certain way. 
or you may find that you are moving it a certain way. I find that I keep stretching the arms. So I might be asking myself, what am I reaching for? You know, what's out here? Um, so as you play with it, just see what it's doing, you know? Does it want to kick? <laughs> it's something. You know, really kind of engage in a little play. It only takes a couple minutes and just see what is your what is your puppet telling you? What is the doll telling you that you want, that you need? Uh, maybe you keep putting it into like a seated position. Maybe it needs to, it's telling you it needs to sit down and just rest to gather your energy, pull all of your energy back, you know, in into yourself. So that is how I play. That's one way that I play. Um, there's another thing that I do. I like to make a sticker scrying board. I will show you an example of one. And this one isn't really the right size for this poppet, but just to give you an example. So it's just a bunch of stickers here that I put on this page. And you could close your eyes and just, you know, pick one and see what it's... You know, oh, it's the perfume. What what message does perfume have for me today? But one of the things that I think is really fun is to take your scrying board and toss your poppet on it. And then you can see what the poppet is touching. So, for example, if we look at the feet, we can see it's on journal and the other foot is on the clock. And then the hand is touching the little poodle and the other hand looks like it's moving towards a gift. So I like to think about the hands as like reaching for things, like things that you want or things that you need. And then I like to look at the feet as actions, like doing things. I need to be writing things down. I need to journal something, for example. So this is a really fun way to use your poppet. Um, and I, I plan to make like a whole, what I call a poppet, playground um, just for the this size poppets because I've made them in different sizes and all the ones I'll be making um, within this series are going to be the same size so you can interchange like the clothing and things like that if you um, if this one in the fire poppet wanted to change clothing for example they could swap out so that is just, you know, one way to think about playing with, with some divination. Um, but I always say that everything is giving you information. So even if you just lay your, your poppet down, is it pointing to something? Is it drawing your attention to something? What kind of movement is it showing you? What could that movement mean? And I've seen so many interesting um, poses from poppets that I did not pose quite like that. Um, so I really do pay attention. I just usually have them in an area where I can just come back and look at them and see where see what they're doing. So I hope that just gives you a starting place um, that you can allow your imagination to really take over and um, play with your poppet. And I hope that you have fun in all of the stages of working with it and playing with it, um, printing it out, designing it, and then um, using it as a tool for play and also for self-discovery.